Illinois faces some big challenges. Today, we're about to hear a truly honest analysis of the problems we face. Equally as important, you'll also hear an in-depth discussion of some practical solutions. This is your radio source for stories, the insight, and the answers you won't hear anywhere else. Not in the media and not coming from Springfield. You're listening to Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Policy Institute. Now, here's your host, AM 560's Dan Proft. Welcome to another edition of Illinois Rising. Dan Proft, co-host of Chicago's Morning Answer with Amy Jacobson, Monday to Friday, 5 to 9 a.m. on AM 560. With me today, Pat Hughes, co-founder of the Illinois Opportunity Project. And um, Pat, uh, as we've talked about on this show before, Illinois is home to the most units of government in the country. And correspondingly, Illinois has the most elected officials, the most politicians of any state in the country. And I wonder if that is a correlative of the fact that Illinois is also the worst governed state in the country, the layers and layers of government. One suggestion that's uh, being made, particularly as what uh, afflicts state government is starting to be visited upon local units of government who cannot keep up with, say, uh, unfunded pension liabilities. It's a little bit different at the municipal level, as you know, too, because uh, IMRF, Illinois Municipal Retirement Fund, and the contributions local units of government have to make, not so fortunate to be able to play games that the state plays with uh, funding pensions as you go. So uh, they have to cut, they have to come up with the money on an annual basis. So this is why Mattoon, Illinois, this week uh, reported this from the Illinois Policy Institute, that because its police and fire pensions are less than half funded and the pension costs on an annualized basis have doubled over the past decade, they're cutting its fire department's ambulance services to help make the annual pension payments. Uh, So one suggestion that's being advanced uh, out of the uh, Manhattan Institute and that's a contributing editor at City Journal, one of their publications, Aaron Wren, is government consolidation. That's been talked about in this state before. There's been a little bit done in the area of school consolidation because, of course, we have, I think, the second most school districts of any state in the nation as well, going back to the number of local units of government. But there's a the piece by Aaron Wren uh, speaks to cities that are dying on the vine, including a couple of Southland cities, Calumet City and Dalton, which uh, perhaps could be consolidated to address unfunded liabilities and to chart a new course for regions and then, by extension, states around the country. Uh, and for more on this topic, we're pleased to be joined by the aforesaid Aaron Wren, contributing editor at City Journal. Aaron, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. So uh, you mentioned uh, Cal City and Dalton, which are two struggling communities in uh, Chicago's south suburbs. Uh, what's the uh, What was the thought process that led you to suggest uh, consolidation of particular communities you highlight a couple in illinois a couple in ohio uh, a couple in new york how did you go about uh, uh, making this analysis and coming up with the opportunities that you see right. well this study looked at many cities in kind of the midwest and northeast places like chicago that have experienced population decline and uh, deindustrialization and where there was a lot of geopolitical fragmentation. So what I wanted to do was select, highlight cities um, from a variety of places and in a variety of conditions to show how it might apply. And so I looked at a few statistics. I looked at basically population. Is your population declining? I looked at poverty rate. Is your poverty rate high and going up? And then I looked at um, household incomes, median household incomes, which I adjusted for inflation and saying, are those falling? Are they falling significantly? And then indications that there might be physical fiscal stress. So there's nothing specifically, you know, horrible about Dalton or, or Cal City. Actually, I spent a lot of time in Cal City, and, and I like it. Uh, Dalton I picked because uh, a couple years ago the bond buyer listed it as one of five uh, candidates for a municipal bankruptcy in the state of Illinois. Uh, and with Cal City, I knew that they were heavily dependent on um, retail taxes, retail sales taxes, fiscally for River Oaks Mall and some car dealerships. But a number of car dealerships closed. River Oaks, two of the four anchors have closed, and I think the other two are Macy's and J.C. Penney, uh, which are two um, 
struggling chains which have been downsizing. So if that mall closed, many, many malls around the country have closed, uh, that, would really, uh, that would really hammer that community fiscally. Uh, Aaron, uh, politically, how does this play out? Because there's two things that jump out at me. Number one, particularly as it relates to these municipalities and their you know, sort of power structure, the people in power and who are employed by these governmental entities are going to be loath to give up that power and the money and the perks that led these things, these places down the, this terrible fiscal path. But secondarily, if you've got a bad municipality, how do you get one that's in sort of better financial shape to absorb it? Well, that's a great uh, two great questions. One, I don't, um, I don't sugarcoat the fact that politically it's extremely, extremely difficult to pull off mergers. That's one reason, generally speaking, I don't, uh, I don't advocate, um, I don't advocate for trying to to consolidate municipalities, you know, like cities and counties and things like that, because it's just too politically difficult to do. In these cases. You know, opportunities, you know, the idea is to have this idea on the table. And when an opportunity presents itself, you know, in part because of maybe some sort of severe fiscal stress, a corruption investigations, the fact is the state governments are going to have to intervene in communities across the country uh, that end up going bankrupt or get into fiscal distress, but under emergency management. All of those options for intervention are going to have their own set of problems. Look what happened in Flint, Michigan, for example. And so when distress comes, when a political opportunity presents itself, I just want to have this idea on the table so people can think about it. And in terms of uh, the central city, you know, probably, yeah, Chicago's got its own problems. It's probably like, hey, we have bigger fish to fry right now just with, within the city limits. Uh, but these big cities get enormous special favors and special treatments from state government. And so I think states have leverage with these big cities to say, look, we're pouring money into all these things. We're creating these structures like McPeer, and we're doing all these things for you, giving you special powers. Um, you need to play ball regionally if you want to do that. So there is leverage with the state. Illinois, of course, politically is a particularly dysfunctional case. Yes, it is. And, and you know, the spiral in these communities you mentioned in terms of your analysis looking at poverty rates, and I was struck by some of the numbers. I'm not surprised, but uh, um, they should be should be highlighted just to explain the spiraling that's happening in communities like Dalton and, and Cal City, Harvey, a lot of South Suburban communities that used to be kind of blue collar powerhouses. Powerhouses. Uh, Dalton's uh, poverty rate, uh, people living below the rate of poverty, has uh, increased by two and a half times in the last uh, two decades, and Cal City's has uh, basically uh, a little more than doubled during that same time period. So you're talking about, and part of this is an important part of the conversation, uh, communities that just don't have the wherewithal because they don't have the tax base to dig themselves out. Isn't that right? Yeah, I mean, to me, I'm very concerned about the ability to deliver services to citizens. A small community that can is providing good quality services, poverty in and of itself. Um, may not even be the biggest issue in some cases, because ultimately just merging someone with the city of Chicago is not going to solve property problems, as we know. All these problems are difficult. But what you end up with is you end up with small territories who are sort of been dependent on a residential and retail tax base. And when that tax base erodes, now they have no place else to turn. They don't have a Chicago loop right. with skyscrapers exactly. going up right, right. now. They have no tax base, and so you end up with situations – like, you know, I, I highlight the case of East Cleveland. I heard you highlighting some as we came on the air. You know, they had to lay off half their workforce. Uh, you know, they, they had to borrow salt trucks from the state because they couldn't plow their streets. All their ambulances were broke down. So when you can't provide basic services to your citizens or you turn to very, very abusive practices to try to raise money, which we saw in St. Louis area, you know, and kind of after Ferguson – People started doing the analysis and saying, man, these communities are financing their entire budgets off of basically tickets and fees and judgments and harassing their citizens, you know, for like over half of the budget to the state. And so a lot of times this, this fiscal distress um, creates very, very bad outcomes. And in a lot of these suburbs, people, you know, the Tribune, the Sun-Times, they're focusing on Chicago, they're focusing on Springfield, they're not focusing on what's happening in Dalton or Calumet City or Calumet Park or any of these places. You know, there are hundreds, you know, there are probably a couple hundred suburbs. I can't remember exactly how many, two, three hundred suburbs in Chicago. 
So uh, they they don't get the attention from the governor. Um, Chicago's financial problems are in the news every single day. You know, Dalton's are not. And so that's that's one reason that I feel consolidating with a higher tax base and somewhere where there's just a lot of media and political focus uh, is, is important. You know, whatever whatever the problems in the poor neighborhoods of Chicago, Rom is on the hot seat to deliver services there and to to help those communities. If you're in a suburb, you don't have that accountability. Yeah, I th- no, I think those are fair points, and it's a good description of the political landscape here, and I assume in other major urban centers as well. He is Aaron Wren, senior fellow at the Manhattan Institute, contributing center, contributing editor, excuse me, at City Journal. Uh, he's got uh, this piece that's worth checking out: "Mergers May Rescue Declining Suburbs." And uh, he uh, lays out the case in uh, greater detail, building on what you've just heard from him here. Aaron, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you.